the soy, I was being ironic, okay? <laughs> Listen, the soy face was ironic. It was, guys, I promise, I don't drink soy, guys. I promise I don't drink soy. There's not an entire fridge full of Soylent five feet away from you, okay? You're gonna call me a soy boy when you're doing this shit, bro. Really? What the f*** is this? Yo. The rumble ads are crazy. I haven't, um, seen Sneeko's reaction to my video yet, but... He called me like a, a soy boy, which I don't know. I mean, visually, I'm fine with him calling me that. You know, I get it. I do have the, <laughs> I do do the soy face. I have the soy appearance. Certainly not, um, not on any kind of bulk right now. Okay. I'm not hitting the gym, but he actually did message me on Instagram asking me to remove like some nudes from his video or something. And, um, I didn't include any nudes in his video. So I was like, what, what are you talking about? Did he get some nudes leaked or something. And what he was talking about was like, he did a paid photo shoot for some like homosexual cameraman. And he got pictures of himself, like, naked taken, like, with his dick out. And I censored that, and it was in my video. It was, like, I used a clip of someone else's video, Brandon Buckingham's video, for my Sneeko video. And Sneeko messaged me, and he was like, can you remove those nudes? Can you remove those nudes? Very unprofessional. And he kept trying to call me on Instagram. And I was like, dude, I'm not answering a phone call from you. I don't fucking, I don't fucking know who you are. Um, or I don't know him, rather. Because, you know, Sneeko's someone who, I feel like he's the type of person to, like, try to ambush me on stream or something. I feel like he's the type of person to try to call me up while while on stream, while he's on stream rather, and like put me in a like uncomfortable position where he's like, "You leaked my nudes," and it's like, "Well, I didn't clearly, but you know, when you when he's saying that on stream, you can be pressured to say and do certain things, and I just didn't want to be in that position, so I was like, "You can type, little boy, you can type," and he did type to me. He was like, "I would never do that publicly. I would never show this publicly," and maybe that's true. I don't I don't really know. He did publicly admit that he was like bisexual or something. And I don't, even, I don't care that he's, like, gay or something. I don't really care that he's bisexual or that he did that photo shoot. It's just, like, it totally contradicts his entire other messaging. So it's just, like, why would I not bring that up in the video? Especially, like, like I'm not the one who leaked it. It was already online to hundreds of thousands of people. I included it. Um, I think he wanted me to remove the entire section. I didn't do that. I decided to blur it just because, you know, I don't know. It didn't take that much away from the video. And it's, like, all right, if it actually upsets him that much, like, you know. I don't think I'd ever be in that position, but if uh, <laughs> if I did a gay photo shoot and someone else included it and it was like supposed to be a private gay paid photo shoot rather than a public gay paid photo shoot, then maybe I would, you know, in his position, I was like, put myself in his shoes. Maybe I'd want that to be taken down. So I did blur the entire thing. So you can't actually see the picture of him anymore. Um, but you can look it up easily if you want to see it still. Um, yeah, it was a pretty uh, interesting interaction. And then like a day later, he posted this tweet. You guys have probably seen it. Actually, let me let me try to find it because it's definitely up there somewhere. So you can see here, this is the picture. This is the picture from my Instagram. I think I was like taking, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think I was taking a shit. I think that's what's going on in this picture. He says, the soy boy collage, the YouTubers who have made hit pieces on me continues to expand. Yet none will ever address the glaringly obvious trend in this picture. They're not supposed to like me. And I, I guess I didn't really get this because like, I don't think we, do we look, do we look all that similar? I don't think I look anything like Nick is not green or whatever, or Hunter Avalon. Or this guy. I've been told I look like Hassan, maybe a little bit, but Hassan is like physically way, he, like way more, way bigger than me, right? And Hassan also, if he was in a fight with Sneeko, Hassan would fucking murder Sneeko. And I'm no Hassan fan, you guys know this, okay? You see my channel, you see me shit on Hassan all the time. I probably, he's probably like this, the person I've shit on the second most on this channel other than Ethan Klein, right? Maybe third, maybe Pokemon's up there, but I'm no Hassan fan, but Hassan would fucking, Hassan Piker would destroy Sneeko in a fight. It would be embarrassing. I know in the video he said that I like don't think for myself or anything, but like within the, like my video was way different than anything like these guys would make about Sneeko, right? Because if these guys made videos about Sneeko, they probably wanted him to get banned and they probably were cheering it on. That wasn't my video. Like my video, my video was relatively nuanced, I would say. I just called him a hypocrite, which he is. Like, there's no, there's no way around that. I, I will say, I feel like I've ascended to a new level. And this is going to sound like a cope a little bit, because people will be like, oh, well, you just put it in there because you actually like me or whatever. And that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, like, I feel like I've ascended to a new level if I'm included in a picture with Hassan and Critical. Like, these are two of the most, like, famous people online. Nick is not green. I feel like he's, he's probably less popular than me by a little bit, but he's still up there. And he's, like, a newer face as well. And he put me with these guys, which is, like, I don't know. I'm not in a terrible tier, if that's the case, right? Like, I am, I'm growing. I am more popular. And also, as far as calling me, like, a soy boy, like, that's fine, but it's not like I have the same, like, 
you know, soy boy politics, right? I'm not, a, I'm not a lefty. I'm not a lib, a, a libtar. I'm not a liberal. So I, I, I don't know. As a basic insult, it's fine because, like, I mean, obviously, you know, if you just go to my video, the ban Andrew Tate clone, that's like the equivalent of what him calling me a soy boy, right? It's like a surface level insult that makes that makes it easy to like click a video, right? Because Andrew Tate's name is way bigger than Sneeko, and obviously he would get pissed off by Taco Tate or Andrew Tate clone, right? That would piss him off. So that's why I did that. But also, just it's good, like. I don't know if it's clickbait, but it's clickbaity. You you probably say that, and that's kind of the reason that I did that title. And obviously, that's why he did the soy boy thing in his title, right? Because it's like it just makes sense, you know. And the thing and the thing about Sneeko too is like I wasn't. I feel like I wasn't super hard on him in my video itself. I feel like I was relatively nice, but whatever. All right, here's the here's the thumbnail. What the f is this, yo? <laughs> the rumble ads are crazy. All right. Listen, we're going to take a look at this Sneeko video. We're going to see what he said. I actually, like I said, I haven't seen it yet. So this is going to be your first off-the-cuff initial reaction to the Sneeko video. Hey, look at the soy boy collage. We added two to the top. Did you guys see there's another uh, another hippies video on me from another soy boy? Why does he talk like that? You guys know this accent is fake? Like, he, he totally fakes this accent? Because I know where this dude's from. This dude's from, like, New Haven, Connecticut. I'd say a very white area. And obviously, he's not white. He's mixed race. But he puts on this, like, hood inflection. He says, duh. He says no cap now, which is not like in his normal dialects. Like he adopted that to seem more kind of <laughs> cultural, racial. It's kind of strange. I don't know. It's kind of like uh, Billie Eilish faking like her accent, which she did for a while. Kind of cringe, kind of unbased. And some people are going to say that it's not a hippies video. Um, but it is. It is. They choose to say negative things about me. And because that, that's what does well. That's what does well. And um, I called it, I, I consider it a hit piece. I watched it last night. It's an hour long, an hour long documentary about my whole f***ing life. And basically my whole existence on YouTube until Elon Musk buys it back or there's a new competitor or Rumble just takes over like it inevitably will. My existence on YouTube. Okay. A few things, first of all. I did say negative things about him, but I didn't, I didn't say them because... I didn't say them because it does well. If I did a positive video, it would do well. Do you guys know? Hold up. Are you guys aware that one of my most popular videos with the most views is one of my most downvoted videos? I think it is anyway. Where is it? Is it? I thought it was like really up there. How many views does it have? This video. You guys know how many dislikes this video has? It won't let me see it right now, but it has like 100,000 dislikes. This video has a million views and only 12,000 likes. And you've got all these, like, meme shithead, shithead comments. When YouTube removes dislikes, remember this video had 94k dislikes and they never apologized? True, I didn't, and I never will. But, point being, like, I'm not, I'm not someone who's like, has a history of, like, just supporting the popular narrative. I'm not someone who has, a, who has a history of, like, just going with the flow. Even in my video about Sneeko, I said he doesn't deserve to be banned, which is not a popular opinion. I had people in my comments being like, I'm gonna unsubscribe from you for this. I'm going to unsubscribe from you because you're you're a centrist, you're too middle of the road, you're supporting his freedom of speech and freedom of speech in the constitution isn't what that means and you know YouTube is a private company. Like I'm not I, but but he, but but in the video like I didn't back off that opinion. I said he shouldn't have been banned because that's just not what I'm about. Like if I have an opinion, as long as it's not going to like destroy my life. If it's going to destroy my life, I just won't say the opinion out, like outright. I won't say it. I won't say the opposite. I won't lie about my opinion. But like I'm, I'm not known for like dishonesty on YouTube. Like, even when people think that I'm really wrong, if you think that I'm like the dumbest person in the world, it's I think you'd be hard pressed to call me a liar because I'm not. I'd say I'm relatively honest. Like I and I, I do strive for honesty in videos because I think it's I think it's good to be honest. I think it's good for your soul. I think it's good for content. And I think if you have a bad track record of lying, people will eventually pick up on that, and it's bad. Even my Andrew Tate video was not overwhelmingly negative, and that was at the peak of his hate. I defended his right to be on YouTube, and I got a bunch of shit for it. People were so mad at me for that. I don't get why I'm I'm seen as like someone who just goes with the flow, goes with the narrative. But maybe it's just I don't know. We're only 34 seconds in, 39 seconds in. Okay. Also, he said Rumble is going to take over. I, I I almost forgot that he said Rumble is going to take over. Rumble is not going to take over. Okay. Rumble is not. Rumble is not going to take over anything. Rumble is going to get some niche viewership. Probably will be somewhat consistent because there are people who like. Sneak other people who like Andrew Tate and people like that who get banned from mainstream platforms and they will have that sort of niche audience. But Rumble is not ever going to take over YouTube. YouTube is 
YouTube is too big to fail right now, okay? And it's actually making money at this point. YouTube has had some of his first profitable quarters in a while right now. And YouTube is expanding into shorts. YouTube is getting bigger than ever. I don't know if you guys know this. YouTube is like growing like crazy. Dude, this ad in the corner is making me go insane. <laughs> Rumble's not going to take over. This is, this is Cope. I think this is what his audience likes to hear, though. They like to hear that Rumble's going to somehow take over YouTube. But Rumble, Rumble in comparison to YouTube is like a P next to the globe. It's, it's that crazy of a comparison. It's not going to happen. It's just uh, from, from these 10 soy boys right here. And I just want to formally challenge all 10 of them to a debate panel. I would love to 10v1 debate all of you. I would talk, I would talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, Sneeko, if you want to debate. I would talk to you. I have a conversation. I'd be down for that. That'd be cool. Maybe I should message him. Tell you what, after this stream, as long as I remember, hold on. Let me let me keep watching this and see what he says, and then maybe I'll I'll message him. Imagine a Discord panel. Type of give me a, a W if you want to see that. If you want to see a ten v one, a ten v one, and search and destroy. It's sometimes one v six at the end of the lobby. Debate tonight. Now, unfortunately, they don't want to. They don't want to. This one, the antidepressant dude did. And pretty much that argument goes out the window when you talk about happiness or an antidepressant. The rest of them all, the rest of the nine here refuse to debate. But they have all made hit piece videos about me saying pretty much exactly the same things. And the chances that they're watching this, are, there's at least four or five watching this right now. All right? They probably saw my all right, I clip. messaged you him. This is what I said. I said, um, you said in your reaction video, you want to talk to me on stream. I'll do it regardless of if the rest of the soy boys come on. So I'll do it one-on-one. -on -one. I won't even do it with the whole panel. I'll just talk to him. I think it would be interesting. Okay. I'm someone who I think is unique in this lineup. I think I'm, I think I'm more of an open critical thinker than someone like Hassan Piker. Cause I'm not like ideologically driven. I don't have a side. And, you know, I actually think Sneeko would like me. If he talked to me, I think he would like me. No cap, no meme. I think he would be surprised. And how based I can be, okay? Let's keep watching. One of you has to address the fact that there's a very obvious trend here with people who look exactly the same and how much they like me and why they're making hit piece documentaries about me. There's another one. The one on the top right made an hour long video about me. Um, it's called The Band Andrew Tate Clone. It's doing well. But the fact that you guys all do so much extensive research and you really look and you dive into my life. I knew this was going to happen and all the ammunition they have, everything they say in videos is stuff that I've done publicly is stuff that I've said on video. I knew this was going to happen. And I was also envisioning the fact that they would use that as ammunition to make documentaries. None of you will address this picture right here. So if you are really genuine commentary channels, if you are really genuine with what you talk about, you would address this very funny collage here. Cause it, it really- I mean, it is, it is a little funny. I'll be honest. Okay. It is a little, <laughs> it is a little funny. I don't think we all look that alike, but I guess I see the comparison, right? We all have brown hair, except does this guy have brown hair? We all have kind of brown hair. A lot of us have like kind of like facial hair. Like he has facial hair. I have facial hair. He has facial hair. Uh, this guy has the handlebar mustache or whatever. I mean, we're all, we're all just like white guys who are like from five, I guess Hassan's taller, but I, I bet the rest of these guys are like from five, eight to under six foot, I guess critical shorter. Maybe the comparison is not that strong. I know Jay Aubrey is really short, but I, you know what? I get it. It's funny. I, look, I address, I address the image, Sneeko. Okay. I address the image up front. I'm addressing the image. It's an hour chat. Do we got to watch this whole thing? Like, I'll, I'll skip around, bro. Thank you. In October 2022, the infamous YouTuber Sneeko was banned from the platform. According to news outlets, this was due to him repeatedly breaking community guidelines, though the specific meaning of this is unclear. In the six months before his ban- How is it unclear? You, you did all this research on my life. I've said it so many times on Rumble. I was banned for COVID misinformation, election misinformation, and cyberbullying and harassment for the Lee 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 joke. No one talks about that. All the soy. The reason I said it was unclear, and also not every everyone definitely cited that. I said it was unclear because you were definitely banned for other reasons. I mean, you seem to think that you were banned for literally anything else. You just, you, you don't seem to think it's COVID misinformation. You seem to think it's because you're speaking truth to power because you're talking about the elites and they don't want you to speak truth, right? 
speak truth through funny. And that's why I said it was unclear because despite, you know, what YouTube specifically said, you seem to disagree with that. The entire community consensus seems skewed on that. Some people seem to think you were banned for being just misogynist blatantly. So I, I like I, I would say it is unclear as it is with any video, right? Or with any band creator, really. It is somewhat unclear. And I, I do talk about that in the video. Boy boys who have made this video saying, oh, he completely broke TOS and I have a robot voice. Why don't you state the facts? That's not what I said. I didn't just say that you broke TOS. I didn't just say that. COVID misinformation and election misinformation. Why is that? Ben, he went from a moderately popular content creator to one of the biggest streamers on the site, regularly going live to more than 20,000 of his extremely loyal, rabid fan base. Some call him a savant social commentator, while others relegate his entire online presence to the promotion of hate. Ignor it's so funny that I call these people bots, and then, and then they talk like this, and I have the text-to-speech default voice, press three for customer service, press two. Does my voice sound like a bot? Do I sound like a bot? I feel like I don't sound like a bot. I feel like I have a decent like YouTube voice. Maybe I'm wrong. My narration is a little chills like, I admit that. Two to hear more options. Para Español, a prima dos. ...and misogyny. One side celebrates him being cast into the Shadow Realm, considering it a win for a more tolerant environment. However, this is far from the consensus. A whole host of people, not necessarily fans of his, by the way, see his banning as a depressing sign of the times that the climate no longer allows for old-school, politically incorrect YouTube, and Sneeko is one of its most prominent scapegoats. But who is Sneeko, and what does he stand for, if anything? People keep saying they want the old Sneeko back, and I want to address this. You don't have to be a fan to understand this video. Look at my comments, you'll see half the people watching want to fight. It's unsettling to see someone you relate to become unrelatable. Am I wrong to say he's enjoying the video? I feel like he's kind of enjoying it. Sneeko, real name Nico. Sorry, I just have to jerk myself off a little there. Nico was born on September 8th. Cap, my real name is Hubert. 1998. Very funny. Just to Cap, I was born in... Okay, that's when I was born. ...in time to grow up alongside the internet. Like the rest of Generation Z, he got to watch as it slowly but surely eroded the space once monopolized by... It's also funny how, like, the people who make these documentaries, they, they always... They're the type of person to just hide behind their screen. So there's people like me who, like, put themselves out there and, like, say risky stuff. People like this don't even have a stance on anything. Their whole career on YouTube is... But in the video, he says, he says these, like, overgeneralizations the entire time, it seems. In the video, I literally say he shouldn't have been banned. Like, I make a definitive statement, opinion, I'm out there. And I took shit for that, and that's okay. I'm not mad about that, but it's like... In the video, like, I pretty blatantly was like, he shouldn't have been banned, and I was nice to him, in that way at least, right? I think his fans just like when he, when he says stuff like this, when he just says, like, oh, all these soy boys are the same. I think they, they, they enjoy that, right? And is like, over, like, look at that. Friday Night Degenerates, the blackmail cult. Um, I remember he made an Andrew Tate video back. Yeah, the scandals of Andrew Tate. All your fucking job is is just shitting on other people who put themselves out there. So go ahead, hide behind your computer and investigate in people's lives. But you will never be us. But is that not what you do too? Hold up. So Sneeko's current channel is called Stewie Guy. I don't know if you guys know this. This is not Sneeko. Oh, look, he posts his reaction there actually. Oh, this is a, a shorter cut too. Okay, maybe I should click this. We're already in too far now. But anyway... Even, oh, this is 52 minutes ago. This is recently. But in all of his videos, he's literally reacting to other people. His whole life is criticizing other people as well. That's what he does on stream. He doesn't, like, you know, create original content right now like he used to. He used to do that on his channel. Now, the reason he got more famous than ever is because every single video is him reacting to what other people say and do. And that's what I do. I, re I react in a way, right? I create a, a video essay out of it, right? It's edited. It tells more of a story. His is more just like off the cuff reaction, his opinion. But my, my videos have my opinion in them too. It's the same. It's the same shit, dude. You're guilty of the same exact thing you're accusing me of. All of your, dude, every single video, Sneeko reacts. Sneeko on Jeffrey Dahmer documentary where he talks about something else. Adam22 discusses religion with Sneeko. In fairness, this is a podcast, but once again, he's talking about other stuff. Hassan Abi should quit politics, Sneeko and Hassan. This is him reacting to Willie Mac show's video. And the original content he does is pretty sparse, like the Sneeko interviews New Yorkers. But even that is like, that's not even his opinion. That's just him talking to other people, getting their opinion. 
everyone on, on, online reacts to other stuff, right? Everyone creates content out of something else. That's what everything is. And you say my face, you say I like hide behind the camera. My face is out there. You can see my face on my Instagram. You use my face for the thumbnail. How do you think you got this? You fucking moron. It's out there. I'll talk to you, Sneeko. I'll, I'll talk to you on stream. I'll quote unquote debate you. I'll have a conversation, okay? You will never be the people who are risking scrutiny to put themselves out there and say something different. You have no unique opinion. You have no stance on anything. Your job is talking about me. Strap in. Legacy media. When you see a teeming cultural shift like that happening, it's only natural to try and join it and ride the wave. He created his YouTube channel on April 9th. On April 9th, I'm a robot without anything unique, so I'm gonna talk about other people, and I'm kind of a robot. I sound like the customer service line. Why is it, is this all he has to say? Just like talk about my voice? I thought you were like an ideas guy. I thought you were like an intellectual debater. I thought you were going to conquer the ideas of the day instead of just like being a f***ing ape bully on stream. Your, your voice sound, why you sound like that? Why does your face look like that? 2013, naming it Sneeko, a clear portmanteau of his first name. At the time, Nico's uploads to the channel consisted of the tried and true Call of Duty commentary routine. While mostly adhering to the commentary form- Yeah, look at this you can put your face in it, right? You're gonna go yeah, invest- Is that TOS? <laughs> also, people like the cartoon, okay? The cartoon's cool. Hey, my whole f***ing life, you put an anime cartoon, f*** it, f*** you. Why is he so angry? Jeez. I mean, the reason why is obviously, like, you know, I'm, I'm doing it journalistically. I'm not a journalist, but you want to get out of the way of the story. You just want to have uh, this little cartoon guy in it. This is how I've done it for years. I like it, okay? I like the cartoon. Oh, uh, guys, W or L cartoon in chat. Put your face in it. If you're gonna go talk about somebody else, you stream. If you're better than it, if like- I'm if, streaming right now. If I'm problematic or whatever, I'm toxic, put your face in it. Also, I don't just call you problematic or toxic. Like, I haven't even said that in the video. You, have you, even, you haven't even seen most of it and you're already saying this, but you're also just like a huge hypocrite, which is what, you know, some of the video is about, but you haven't even gotten there and you're already saying all this shit. There you go. And now forever you're going to live in this collage here with the rest of the other soy boys who have made the exact same video about me. Formula, he would attempt to put his spin also, on Also, I, I resent the idea that I made the same video as everyone else. Okay, I do resent that. Especially, you haven't even seen it yet. The concept, which often meant delving into political discussion over his gameplay. All right, so the main issue we're going to talk about today, like we said, is uh, separation of church and state. The question at hand is, should the U.S. intervene in Syria? Imagine you're in a B. Imagine you're in a BO2 lobby, and you just hit this little ball. Uh, should the U.S. intervene in Syria? It's like, the plant the bomb at B. Shut the f. Sneeko always made a point of being as transparent as possible in his beliefs, harboring an open discussion on various topics, from wacky internet shenanigans to gun control to critiques of feminism. Looking at it from a neutral perspective, he was actually a good deal ahead of the curve when it came to controversy maxing. Every time the cartoon comes on screen, I feel like he's really angry. I feel like he doesn't like that. <laughs> he does not like the cartoon, guys. <laughs> Which later became the MO of seemingly every commentary- I have no respect for these anime people, bro. No respect. YouTuber. It's not- does it look like anime? It's not anime. I don't like an- well, I mean, I like some anime. But I don't like anime as the general rule, okay? I'm not an anime head. It's not anime. Guys, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm coping a little bit right now. Guys, do you think it's anime? Can you tell me if it's anime? Because now that a lot of people are finding this, I, it's just so cowardly to make your whole content someone else and you can't even put your face in it. They're saying, why are you just copying text? It's not cowardice, though. Like, you can find my face easily. You managed to find it in, like, one second. It's just that, like, the video is not about me. It's about you. It's a documentary piece about someone else. I don't need to like shove my face in there where it's unneeded. One of the most annoying things that I find, like I, I literally find it offensive when someone does a video essay where the entire point is like about someone else and then they just include their face haphazardly when it doesn't need to be there. This isn't just like a reaction video. This is me telling a story, okay? It's me, me giving an account. So it's not, I feel like my face just doesn't need to be in there. And if you want to find my face, it's out there. It's so easy. Like you can ridicule my face in, in one second. The Instagram is linked right below it. It's so easy. Hey, I've been saying the same since 2015. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I've been on the same since 2000. I started my channel in 2013. If you don't believe me, if you think that I'm just riding a wave right now, get off my During this period, he enjoyed a moderate amount of success, cultivating a loyal fan base intrigued by what he had to say. 
Eventually, this led him to drop out of college to pursue a career as a full-time content creator. At the time, it seemed risky, especially considering that having YouTube as a job was an even less believable prospect than it is now for the average person. Nonetheless, it paid off. His content would evolve, keeping the edge that intrigued so many during his Call of Duty commentary days, but now with a more philosophical bend to it. We have a donation from Eternal Dark Lord 1227 <laughs> Jesus, for two, says, Can you please inspect Element the ad away? The ad is staying, okay? You little piggies need to enjoy the ad, okay? Maybe you need to lose 57 pounds in 28 days using the one simple trick. Maybe you need to do that. We're keeping the gunt, okay? W gunt in chat, if you could call it that. He started recording and editing video essays and think pieces on ego, catcalling, obesity, and his position- let's look, at, let's look at your life. Let's look at you, right? Let's flip it on you for a second. Ooh. <laughs> How about you? Is someone ever going to make a documentary about you? A lot of people have, believe it or not. There's a lot of uh, YouTube videos about me. I'm one of those guys. Just, just your average guy, just a dude. Just a dude. Ooh. Guys, listen. The soy, I was being ironic, okay? <laughs> listen, I was being ironic, okay? The soy face was ironic. <laughs> it was I meta irony. It was guys that promise I don't drink soy. Guys, I promise I don't drink soy. Guys, believe me, I don't I don't drink soylent. There's not an entire fridge full of soylent five feet away from you, okay? <laughs> yeah, no wonder you gotta make a video about me. How does it feel? He's watching this right now. How does this feel? Feels alright. It's content. This is the soy boy face, bro. I should have put this face in the collage. Dude, the soy boy face is ba is based. W soy in chat. W soy in chat right now. Right now. I'm expecting everyone in the Discord to soy face with me tonight. Okay, we're drinking soylent. We are drinking our pronoun soda. We're eating our MSG bur burger. Okay, you're gonna call me a soy boy when you're doing this shit, bro. Really. Sneeko would always have the propensity to collaborate with other creators to boost the growth of his online presence. When Drama Alert, which back then was at the peak of its game, was looking for a guest star to read a series of statements by a notorious YouTube prankster, FoosyTube, Nico would jump at the opportunity. Hubert. Neither Sneeko nor Keemstar could have seen the absolute diarrhea hurricane about to ensue. Keemstar. <laughs> that was the funniest moment in the video. <laughs> the diarrhea hurricane thing. Okay, Star I'm still laughing at that. I'm still kecking. I'm kecking in my pants about it. All right. Would give the job to Sneeko, despite Nico's age and the personal animosity between the two. The voiceover that Sneeko returned to Keemstar was the reading that you did was, sh and then when I told you it wasn't good privately. Is there privately a two times told speed this? Oh, here we good. go. Privately told you I'm not going to use it. You had a hissy. What's with this like murder documentary music? You see what this is? Like the filter and everything? This is what people want. This is modern day content. Commentary channels, they used to have something to say or be actually entertaining, but now everything is drama maxing for these people. So they just- Everything has always been drama maxing for the commentary community. What the f are you saying? Also, the music is like, it's suspenseful because it's a suspenseful moment, okay? It's you getting an argument with Killer Keemstar, the gnome himself. Why would I not add that music? That makes it more entertaining. The music elevates it. Also, I have a whole other channel. I have this whole channel where all it's all my fucking opinion. I, I just don't get it. How am I like the coward? I don't get it. How am I the soy boy? How am I the bot? I'm unique. I will not be reduced to a son Piker level. All right. I have on my fucking life and only has like negative things to show up on the screen. Barely talking about my career. Barely. I didn't barely talk about your career. The first 10 minutes of the video are me talking about your career. And it's not only negative things. I literally say like there are good things about your content. Why are you so fucking dense? Is this just what your audience wants to hear? I don't get it. Talking about the things that I was saying. Not putting clips of my videos, putting all the drama. Like a little boy. And I even included a bunch of clips of your videos in the video. Do you not have eyes? Are you deaf? Can you not hear the video? Are you fucking brain dead?
and tried to get back at Kingsbury because means. you had an opportunity to be in front of 400,000 people and you blew it, but you couldn't accept the fact that you did a bad job. Instead, you tried to pass the buck on me. Sneeko wasn't about to take this hit to his pride sitting down. After losing the opportunity to reach such a large audience, he would resort to another way of making it big. Sorry, an hour of this, just an hour long, man. The pots. For once, Sneeko can't see the comments because I'm banned on YouTube. <laughs> actually pioneered a new genre of YouTube videos instead of just contributing to an already existing one. This innovative category was nothing other than Keemstar exposed videos, which up until that point were scant since the majority of YouTubers either ignored him or wanted to be on his good side. Like many pioneers of experimental new art pieces, Sneeko's video would go entirely unappreciated. Once again, he failed to enter the limelight, and Nico deleted the expose soon after its publication. The notorious Gnome and Sneeko would convene on episode 11 of the Hashtag Triggered Podcast. While Keemstar confronted Sneeko for leaking private discussions and breaking his trust, Sneeko attempted to prove the opportunity was a setup, and Keemstar wanted him to fail all along. My point is, is how non-important Sneeko is. But in Sneeko's mind, the world revolves around him, right? We're talking about all these people that offer to do this job, right? And I picked Sneeko. How am I holding a grudge against him? I'm not f***ing giving him the opportunity just so he can f***ing fail. Mr. Beast was once a relatively small YouTuber, if you can believe that. And his content came from the same strain as Sneeko's. Commentary over epic Call of Duty gameplay. During this time, the two would often talk with one another in comment sections, hyping up each other's videos. It's, yeah, someone, it's just the same hit piece over and over and over and over. Videos ...and being generally supportive. Their similar ages and desire to be the best on the platform. But it's not. Which it's literally not. I talked about shit that no one else talked about in their videos. So I don't see why this, like, just extreme animosity. My my best guess would be that it feels good for him to have someone to, like, easily shit on. Because it's like, oh, everyone doesn't everyone who doesn't like me is a bot. I can kind of grow the cult a little bit, get them to hate the outsiders more. All the YouTubers are bots. But if you come on Rumble, you're not a bot. You're based. Rumble's gonna beat everyone. Virgin and creator. But it's not. It's, it's just not. So how many different versions of the same video do we need? Like, you could watch one, you get the point, bro. But look, you get 440,000 views, like, it's very profitable. But this video is stuff like making jokes, like helping edit, like helping set up the stuff. How did you meet him? From YouTube, because I was doing Call of Duty videos for years before. So we, we had known each other from comment sections when I was 14, 15. With Mr. Beast, it was crazy, because I knew him for years. He was always commenting, encouraging me, saying positive things. He would pass me, I would pass him. And then out of nowhere, he blew up. It really just tested my ego. Fundamentally, Sneeko wanted to work for himself, ideally by himself. Building his own following, wealth, and content with little concern for anything else. His failed run-ins with various creators most likely led to this outlook. He wanted success, he wanted money, and the supposed freedom it would give him. But he wouldn't bend to an algorithm to attain it. As a matter of fact, he would actively strive against it whenever given the opportunity. If he was going to be the- And this is literally like, I'm being nicer to him than I need to be. Literally in this video, I'm like, he wouldn't bend to the algorithm. He wanted to go his own way, which is probably like something people would say is admirable, right? Creating your own art in spite of the algorithm at the time. Like people would say that's good. And I was basically, I was saying it's good. And- I, I just don't get it. He only reacts to like the most like stupid like clippable little bits that he can be like BOT! Best on the platform, he would do it on his own terms. When I started working for Mr. Beast, I was blown away at how he was making videos. I was used to people just around filming in public. He was operating his crew like a business. Mr. Beast, on the other hand, saw it to study and dissect the algorithm itself, researching the most minute details of a video and how it reflected on his performance. For example, when we were making this Lego car video, he was absolutely sure it was gonna go viral before we even started filming. It took three days to assemble these cars. We had to strip down the golf cart, strip down the go-kart, take these drills and attach the Legos one by one. It was a lot of work, but the whole time he had this image in mind of those Lego cars going down the street in the thumbnail with the Photoshop cop car in the back. The title is I built a working car using only Legos. You don't need to watch that video to know. I'm quitting. Since that choice would be taken for him when a representative of Mr. Beast informed Nico that he didn't need to return to production that summer. From a guy that used to be bit ever move, think my video is someone edit. And he would not take it lying down. Sneeko would post a video attempting to expose his former son. If he was going down, he was bringing Jimmy right with him. So, so what happened? Context. Mr. Beast fired me and I made an exposed video and I said that he- And even uh, in this, it's like, I showed the most charitable possible perspective of it. I wasn't like, he tried to ruin Mr. Beast's life. I was like, he got mad at him, and then I show his response to it and his reflection. It's not like a bunch of out of context clips of him where I like shit on him. It's not, it's certainly not a hit piece in any way. The only people I make hit pieces on are like the worst degenerates ever. And I don't even need to make it like a hit piece. I can just show the fucked up shit they do, and then people hate them. Like Kira the Wolf or whatever, someone like that, right? One of the evil furries or someone like that, or Isabella Janky, right? These people, like, I, I don't even have to make hit pieces on them, quote unquote, because they're already just disgusting people. I can just show what they did. I know you want me to click the Gunt ad, I won't click it. You can go on Rumble and try to find the Gunt ad, but I'm not clicking it, okay? I'm sorry. I can't click it. I can't tell you the trick. So I've been making content about you. It's like reviewing your content. Yeah, see, look at the bagel soy boy in the bottom left who called me stupid in the video. You see it? Look at this dumb ass. Look how ugly you look. I Look at that. I got in a call in five minutes and he's still coping to this day. Oh, it's not funny. Like, at least it should be funny. Like, you're really boring to listen to. Like, everybody in here is laughing at you. Your voice is annoying. Like, at bottom line, like, that's screaming. Wait, do you really think that's funny? You made jokes about eyelashes? Like, the thing about it is, like, I think this stuff is funny, but it's not a very good argument. Like, I wish Nico would engage with their ideas more. I feel like that would be better, but.
At the end of the day, someone like Mr. Beard is probably not that worth arguing with. I'll give him that because Mr. Beard is just going to like, you know, Mr. Beard is a sort of immovable object, right? You can't convince him of anything rational. That dude like said that me and my fans were fascist because we were making fun of like Ethan Klein for being fat. And he was like, fat phobia at the end of the day is a core tenet of fascism. Like that guy is a idiot. All of these issues were compounded by Sneeko's association with far-right political commentator Nick Fuentes. There hey. is something baked into the cake in Judaism which affects how they are brokering these kinds of contracts with entertainers like Ye. The people who were already worried that Sneeko's social media machine might become a dangerous trash fire were now seeing that things might have been worse than they expected. The overall careless attitude he had... W Nick W Ye. Shout out to all the Groypers. ...what kinds of things he exposed his fan base to. Alert. Shout out to all the Groypers. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to all the Groypers. Griper! Did those who already thought he didn't deserve a platform with such a young and impressionable audience. Griper! As a consequence, people began wondering how they could get- That's meta irony, trolling. Get him kicked out by any means necessary. What's up, Cozy? 07 to the chat. Shout out to all the Griper's man. I stayed up. Gang, gang. Nick, there we are. Hey. Hey! hey. I'm good. How are you doing? Did Nick getting on my ass right now? Just, and I, I think this is honestly one of the reasons that he got put on the map. Him talking to Nick. And I tweeted about this. I was like, Sneeko's talking to Nick Fuentes. He's talking about election stuff. How long until they ban him? And I, I'd say I re like somewhat called it, right? It could have been seen coming because when you start talking to someone like Nick Fuentes, like obviously he's someone who is like considered off limits, right? To talk to on YouTube, maybe not to talk to, but to like collab with in like a positive light. Like obviously Destiny can get away with it because he's like, you know, on the left, he's debating him. But if you're both right wing, like very, you know, right wing like Nick is and you're talking to him, obviously you're going to get, you're going to get kicked off. Okay. YouTubers like Nick Green would go as far as to break YouTube's terms of service to advocate. I call him Nick Green. Clearly Nick is not green. Flagging of Sneeko's accounts to get him deplatformed. Sneeko is harassing a female content creator, telling her that the reason why she Hey, another soy boy. Where's he at, chat? Find him. Find the soy boy. You got it. Top right, second row. He's so upset. Ah. Uh... <laughs> that is because she hasn't had sex in a while, and then he proceeds to aggressively simulate a sexual assault on Chad Chad in his live stream in front of thousands of people. If you watch this video and you also believe that Sneeko should be banned from YouTube, you can. Now, the thing is, I agree with Nick's evaluation of what that video was. Like, it was probably a mock sexual assault. Should he have done that? No. Should he have been banned? Also, no. But obviously, Nick thinks everyone should report him to get him deleted off YouTube. And that's just not something I agree with, right? I'm not, I'm not of that ilk. I'm not on Nick is not green side. And this is the thing I don't like. I don't win with any of these sides because, like, if I don't like, Sneeko's the kind of person who talks about like, you know, freedom of speech. He talks about taking the red pill. He talks about being, I don't know, trad or something. He talks about escaping the Matrix with Andrew Tate, right? But then if you like contradict his narrative at all, he immediately casts you into like the soy boy category. Which is like, it's doing the same exact thing that these guys do. These guys are dismissive and generalize everything and don't listen to what people have to say and are totally like anti-intellectual fools. And so is he. He's not even willing to have a conversation. He doesn't say anything about my video. He doesn't actually give like a decent take. You can go to his channel pages, click about, and then click the flag icon. Like on the in right. this entire video, have you guys heard like one criticism of my video that's been like valid or cogent or like made sense or like been worthwhile? I haven't heard one. It's all just been like assumptions about my video before he's seen it. And now that he's watching it, he just like sits back and watches the entire thing. and doesn't have much to say except like, oh, soy boy. Oh, that's a soy boy. Uh, w Tate. Side of the page. And this is the craziest thing that I've ever seen somebody so competently post on YouTube. Bro. You can go to his channel pages, click about, and then click the flag icon on the right side of the page and report the user. The aforementioned Brandon Buckingham will even get involved. Tweeting, the fact that Sneeko, after knowingly falsely accusing the ironic green so called hardly speaks the truth, you've become an Okay, we skips through that part, obviously. Absolute f***ing idiot. I don't care if you're toxic and problematic. I care about people's safety. Doesn't want to talk about Brandon, does he? Ideas that you are spreading on your channel directly lead to people being less safe. All right, tell me to my face then, pussy. Sneeko's termination was really a long time coming. Did he deserve it? I would say no. But was it inevitable? Yes. However, they didn't stop at that and moved on to deleting his entire channel as well. It didn't matter that he had run that channel for over a decade as seniority is meaningless to YouTube. And down the drain went an entire decade's worth of dedication and arguably even talent. Just like that. I would go on about how the precedence that this kind of crackdown sets should be a warning to all of us, but these days most people don't care about free speech anyway, so I, I, you know what, I won't waste my breath. Whether you agree or disagree with him, Sneeko's young fan base, along with Tate's before him, are simply migrating to alternate websites or private chat groups, where they will continue to be as raucous and offensive as you can imagine. I have no idea what will happen when this cultural pressure cooker blows up, but I'm certain it means bad news for the people who banned them in the first place. After nearly a decade of dedicating my life's work to YouTube.com, they terminated all of my channels. Not only that, but I'm going to pursue legal action against Google for freezing 120000 of my dollars because they terminated and my account. that's up. That's f***ed up. They f took his money. $120,000. That's the most f***ed up thing that YouTube does. When they ban you, they just take all the last month's ad revenue that you haven't been paid. $120,000 is like an insanely good paycheck for like one person in a year, never mind in one month. And YouTube took that from him. That's crazy. That should not, that's, that shouldn't be legal. It, might, it probably is legal, but it shouldn't be.
when they felt like it. So I posted a YouTube short on my main channel saying, hey guys, I can't stream for two weeks. I'll see you soon. And YouTube hit me with a circumvention strike and that's how they were able to delete everything off the platform. A lot of these booster shot indoctrinated brainwashed YouTubers are trying to take credit for the fact that I'm banned when in reality it's bigger than you. The government is watching me. The Senator of Michigan played my clip of a stream, the committee. The and this is probably true, but I'd say honestly, the thing that probably got him banned for real is not the government as much as like that narrative sounds cool for him that like the government came after him because he's speaking the truth. I think what happened is that he got a bunch of media articles written about him. People wrote about Andrew Tate. They saw it. It's Nico is the next Andrew Tate. <coughs> And then they banned him, because if there's one thing we know, it's that YouTube listens to journalists. Chair of Homeland Security said that I'm a domestic threat and that I'm encouraging violence. What really happened is Susan got a phone call from somebody on Epstein Island saying... And I, I, don't, I don't believe this. I don't think she got a phone call from someone saying ban Sneeko. I don't think anything like that happened. I think what happened is that he created bad press and journalists wrote articles about him and YouTube banned him because he's talking about, like, the election and stuff. And, like, you know, C-19, we'll say it for that on, on, on this stream. For stream purposes, if you guys know what I'm talking about, C19. I think that he talked about that stuff, and the media got upset, and they sent you know the stuff to YouTube, and YouTube listens to the media because when the media reports something, then you know shareholders and whatever company like Google, they tend to be like, oh well, you need to get rid of this, or we're gonna pull out, you know, ad boycotts and shit like that. And that's what it is at the end of the day. I think YouTube's incentive is not as much to silence Nico because he's speaking the truth. I think it's a pure financial thing. That doesn't make it necessarily better, but it is like, I think that's the real explanation. I think it's more realistic than the convenient narrative you can sell, which is like an entertaining kind of soap opera to your fans. Which is like, oh, well, I got banned by Joe Biden. You need to get rid of this guy. He's growing too fast and he's exposing the truth. You need to get rid of him before he keeps waking people up. I am exactly who I say I am. And people don't believe the lies like they have with all these other martyrs of free speech. I posted a list of names on my Instagram. Andrew Tate, Kanye West, Donald Trump, Alex Jones, Julian Assange, Wayne Snowden. All these people who have tried to save freedom of speech. And Instagram took it down for violence. Time will tell, and eventually people will understand where I'm coming from. The response from fellow content creators was, to say the least, largely indifferent. Well, I mean, I tried to warn him. <laughs> I tried to warn him. And uh, yeah, YouTube, I mean, look, it's YouTube's uh, website. They can do whatever the f they want. If he broke TOS, then that's an L for him. But I, I, I warned him. I told him, like, he was moving mad. He was moving mad. Shout out Sneeko. We talked about Sneeko, didn't we? It's basically just a manosphere, red pill, woman hating loser. Want to be Tate. Yeah, just, just another one, you know, another off brand, uh, insecure man. So anyway, he got banned. So we'd love to see it. See you, partners. See you, partner. You can argue that. So I'm not, obviously, I'm not cool with that. I don't like that. This YouTube's right to simply wipe the existence of naughty people off of these sites, but don't be so surprised when it happens to you. We can celebrate or deride Sneeko's ban all we like. It doesn't change the facts. As of the time of writing, we are ultimately at the whim of an unfeeling algorithm that picks sides, changes rules, and punishes anyone and everyone when it suits its need. It took me a month to make. There's cinematics in it. It's like a short film. There's scripting. It's artistic. There's a really funny street interview at the end. I was basically playing the character of an incel to try to view women accurately in 2022. And this idiot watched this video. I was like, oh my god, this guy's literally doing like an incel dude. He didn't even understand it because of his low IQ bot brain. And he probably made more money in 10 minutes reacting to- <laughs> And I agree with that. Like, obviously Hassan has like the, some of the worst reactions out there. If you see his reaction to Sneeko's video, he completely misses the point and decides to paint him as an incel. Which is not what the video is about. The video is like- I'd say anti incel. It's more of a think piece that's like level headed and cool. It's not like anti women. It's not hating women. It's not misogynistic in any way. That came later for Sneeko. To my video that I spent a month making, pouring my heart and soul into one of the best videos I ever made. And so I'm like, why am I spending all this time investing into trying to change people's mind, trying to make difference on the internet where people are so easily brainwashed and influenced, when I could just react to sh when I could just yell, because this guy's not funny, this guy's not entertaining, he's low energy, he's stupid and predictable, I can be better than this. And in three months, I almost got a million subscribers from nothing on my second channel so fast that they had to ban me. So I wanted to prove the point that I could be better than these bots, and I did. You're better than them. That's Fire me up, bro, even with the creepy fucking dramatic music. Well, you became them. How did I become them? Do you think that a spiritual void exists today in the Western world? Yeah, <laughs> yeah to not. ignore that. <laughs> you became them, which is true, he did. He became like the content creator. Obviously, he's going to ignore the end where I defend his right to exist on the platform. I say he shouldn't have been banned. He's got to ignore that because he can't because then it would be inconvenient to the narrative that I'm a bot, that I'm spreading false narratives about him, that I'm like Hassan, that I'm like, I don't know, critical or something. Did critical say he should be banned? I don't think he did. All right, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> So see, he's he's he skipped the part which like completely contradicts his narrative, obviously, because why would he watch why would he watch that part? And the rest of the video was like a nothing reaction. Honestly, not gonna lie, I thought there was gonna be more in there. Even knowing Sneeko, knowing his track record, I honestly thought there was gonna be more of a reaction in there. But um, I guess not. I guess I just don't get that. I guess I'm not worthy. I thought there was gonna be a lot more of a um, I don't know, like a critical look at it. I thought he was gonna view it through a critical lens. Because the thing is, when Sneeko does try, he does have like good takes, and he can't have like a good opinion. And I'm not even saying, like, because he's right, because he agrees with me. I'm saying, like, he can fully flesh out what he thinks. But the thing that his audience likes the most is him screaming like a f***ing ape at the top of his lungs, being like, BUT! And I thought I would get more out of it than that. I thought Sneeko would be more of an intellectual, give more of an intelligent take, but apparently I just don't get that from this video. Instead, all I got was, I don't know, him making fun of my face, him making fun of my voice, which is fine. Like, I'm not against that. I think that's funny. 
That's part of what I do. But also, like, don't you have something more than that? Don't you have some more substance? I thought you were going to be entertaining. It wasn't, it wasn't even funny. It wasn't even that. So I don't know. Listen, I tried. I watched the Sneeko reaction. I addressed it on stream. Appreciate you guys watching my reaction all the way to the end. If you guys liked it, be sure to leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike and leave a comment down below with your thoughts.